This is an epic Batman action figure from 2022's The Batman, and I'm about to take my creativity to the next level by transforming it into three alternate posters. Can I turn this figure into some impressive art? Let's find out and let the challenge begin. So the figure I'm using today is from Metacom Toys Mafex line. I'm going with this version as it offers the most detail and accuracy compared to other 112 scale action figures. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Sidon McFarlane. With a quick look at the figure, we can see the level of detail they put into it, and it looks like they pulled him out of the movie. That's how good it is. It even comes with additional accessories, some of which I may use, like this unmasked head for instance, and extra hands. If you're looking for a great Battenson figure on this scale, I highly suggest you check this one out. I really want to get this figure immortalized on some posters, but before I can do that, I need to capture every detail of the figure with my trusty camera. I'm opting to use my 50mm lens to get up close and personal on the figure. With the figure set up, I think I'm ready to start taking photos with different poses and angles, so I'll have some variety to work with. Alright, so I took quite a few pictures of this figure, but these are the ones that stood out to me the most. I think they capture the tone of Batman's character and how he's portrayed in the film quite well. With our photos selected, I'll boot up my editor of choice, which is Adobe Photoshop. For our first poster, I wanted to use this side profile of the figure. I won't use the background, so I'm cutting the subject out using the pen tool for a more precise cutout, and since I'm using a solid color background like these black foam boards, it's much easier to tell which part is the figure and which part isn't. Brighter colors work as well and probably is much easier than this, but this is what I had around, and with proper lighting, it does help with the separation of the background. About 15 minutes later, my Batman is selected and I can place him into the separate project for our poster. To help me design the poster, I'd like to use the official movie logo as a key element to build around. I feel that adding this now rather than later on will help me get an idea of the layout that I want to go with. Looking at everything I have on screen right now, I gotta say this color scheme of black, red, and white is pretty striking, so this might be a look I go for now or perhaps in a different poster. I want to kick off the design by fading out the figure, so I used this smoke brush effect on a mask and began brushing away. When the Batman was prepping for its release, I remember a lot of the official posters for the movie using a black and red color scheme, so I decided to ditch the white and use a gradient to see how that looked. Next, I wanted to make more adjustments to the figure, like darkening it. When looking for more poster inspiration, I found this character poster of the Riddler where he's holding a letter up to the Batman, he's against the black background, and they've changed him to the color red. Something about this poster just looks very striking and it captivates my eyes, so this is something I think I want to go with instead. The simplicity of this poster is neat, but I could add some other elements that tie into the movie. I figured the best way to do that would be text, so I found this custom font inspired by the Riddler's handwriting, typed some references to his character, and added some question marks. For the final touch, I added this gritty overlay to give it a damaged feeling, and after a few more changes, my first poster was complete. I also made two other versions with the same shot of the figure, so let me know which one you prefer in the comments. Now before we go any further with this challenge, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Whatnot. Whatnot is the ultimate live auction app for collectors. Think of it this way, what if you could combine YouTube live streaming and online auctions into a seamless and interactive experience? Well that's what Whatnot does. You'll find a variety of collectibles including rare and exclusive items, and whether you're into action figures, trading cards, comics, and more, Whatnot has something for everyone. Whatnot isn't just another marketplace though for you to buy stuff, it's a community. So while buying or selling items, you can connect with fellow collectors, which is a lot of fun. And that's not even the best part of this all, because on Friday, March 29th at 6.30pm Eastern Standard Time, I'm going live on Whatnot to give back to all of you in celebration of reaching 20,000 subscribers. I've even picked up some Batman related items I'll be giving away, including this Mafex Batman scene in this video. Plus, if you're new to Whatnot, I'm also giving you all $10 in credit via the link in my description to use on collectibles I may have for sale in the future or other sellers live streams. So what are you waiting for? Mark your calendars for the celebration and join in on the collecting fun on Whatnot. Now, back to the challenge. Now, Robert Pattinson's Batman doesn't do a whole lot of dynamic poses throughout the movie, it's just a lot of standing around, which can be very boring. But I wanted to use an action pose for at least one of these posters, so I'm using this one of Batman midair with his cape blowing behind him while also holding his grapnel launcher. I'll remove it from the background, place it onto our poster layer, and we're ready to go. Once again, I'm staying with that color of black and red, so I'll fill the background with a solid red and then tweak the position and size of the figure. Next, I added a big circle reminiscent of a moon with a few adjustments in the color, a bit of glow and drop shadow, and this is looking pretty nice. Our grayscale Batman is neat, but what if I gave him a grainy texture? That's much better. Now let's bring the rest of this design together.
Wrapping up my last adjustments, here is the final poster plus two alternate styles. Let me know which one you think is best. Now remember earlier when I said I'd want to use the red, black, and white color scheme from the first poster that caught my attention? Well, let's use it for our third and final design of the video. I wanted to take inspiration from the original Star Wars poster, which I like a lot, with the images inside the box and white space surrounding it. I want this poster to have a vintage feeling since I like the look of those posters a lot. I won't go into the full detail for this one, so just sit back and watch it all come together with a time lapse and some epic music. I proudly present our final poster of the challenge. Among all of the designs, this one stands out as my personal favorite. Not only does it convey that vintage aesthetic I wanted for it, but it also has a mysterious feeling as well, which is cool. Just like the previous two posters, I've also made some alternate designs, so let me know down in the comments which one you like the most. Now this is the first time I've ever tried something like this here on the channel, but it was a fun experience and I'm glad that I gave it a shot. I originally planned for this to be a pose recreation video as I've done in the past with other figures, but I wanted to try something different that I haven't done on the channel yet. I'd love to do something like this again, perhaps actually recreating some of my favorite movie posters with action figures or doing it with album covers. I think either one of those concepts could be pretty fun to test out. So if that's something you'd like to see here on the channel, drop a like and subscribe for more action figure goodness. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.